Ever since Mercedes brought the long wheelbase E-Class to India, it's been near unbeatable as the quintessential luxury car and they've just gone and facelifted it and it's nearly unrecognizable. But BMW isn't letting them get away completely scot-free. They've gone and facelifted the 6 GT. And both these cars here are in their range-topping six-cylinder diesel variants. Can BMW take the fight to Mercedes this time? Let's find out. Both these cars were facelifted internationally about a year back and have made it to India at around the same time. Also, they're both in their sportiest trims that bring more aggressively styled body kits and wheels. The 6 Series Gran Turismo in this update earns a larger pair of kidney grills, new headlights, redesigned bumpers front and rear and a redesigned light signature in the taillights and it retains its signature frameless doors. If you're thinking the 6 GT looks larger than the E-Class, you'd be right, it's longer, wider and taller. That last metric being instantly noticeable, with the 6 GT still appearing near crossover style from certain angles thanks to its large notchback boot. The updates to the 5th gen E-Class are far more drastic making it look like an all new car with a fully revised front fascia, slimmer headlights and taillights that accentuate its width. And since it was revealed before the new gen S-Class was, saying the S looks like the E is more correct than the other way around which should do its bit as far as bragging rights go. The overall effect is that the E-Class looks sharper and lower to the ground than before, especially in this AMG line trim. That said, the 6 GDM Sport is sportier looking thanks to its 19-inch wheels and more flamboyant body kit compared to the E-Class AMG line 18-inch wheels and subtle bumpers. The standard 6 GT also rides on 18-inch wheels, though those wheels don't do as good a job in offsetting the visual bulk at the rear. On the other hand, the standard E-Class on 17s manages its proportions better. Speaking of, the E-Class rides on a longer wheelbase but only just. With an extra 9mm between the wheels, you'd swear it feels like a lot more from inside the cabin. The E-Class's cockpit places you low and continues to feel more wow and opulent with a twin 12.3 inch screen set low on the dash that wraps around you giving you a very distinct feeling of being cocooned in luxury. The steering wheel is new and the capacitive buttons on them can prove to be quite fiddly, often needing a bit of concentration to get things done right on the first go. On the other hand, the 6 GT's cockpit feels more traditionally BMW and not as tech heavy. Though its new twin screens are of exactly the same size as the Mercs, they don't quite have the same effect thanks to their placement. This could be a good thing or a bad thing but the system is less distracting on the move. You also sit higher up in the BMW so visibility out the front is a bit better too. Both feel exceedingly well made though the BMW has a slight edge in customization with more interior colors on offer. The beige and topaz blue on the E-Class AMG line may not be to everyone's taste. Both also have a long list of features to keep you happy whether you're in the front or the rear seat with the BMW throwing in a few extras like the standard excellent laser lights and the rear seat entertainment package. It trades points with the Merc though, which has a few comfort features of its own like more comprehensive rear seat controls and even rear quarter glass sun blinds. Sun the rear seat of the Mercedes-Benz, it really feels like there's no competition. The breadth of comfort that these recliners offer really has no parallel in this price range at all. You've got full adjustability for your seats. You even have the chauffeur package so you can move that seat up ahead control the sun blinds and you've got a tab here to take care of your media navigation and infotainment duties. Granted, it doesn't give you access to CarPlay, so if that's something that you're running, well, this is pretty much useless. But it is a very big part of the overall feel-good factor that you get. You've even got charging points up there. Just to get into the details of just how comfortable this recliner seat is, your head sinks back into this head cushion. You've got great under thigh support and more than enough room for your feet. It really, really does give you a very S-Class like experience. 
So while overall seat comfort in the support that it gives your thighs is quite similar, the backrest doesn't quite go as far back as it does in the E-Class. And over shorter commutes, it's not something that you'll really realize. But over a long distance journey, yes, you do feel like you're sat quite a bit upright. The flip side is that the 6GT does have 4-zone air conditioning and this M Sport variant comes with the rear seat entertainment package as standard. So that adds quite a bit of value to your experience in the back seat if you know what to do with it. As a happy surprise, the screens also give you control of your smartphone's media via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, something you can't do via the tablet in the E-Class where you only have control when paired via Bluetooth. The E-Class goes a step further than the 6 airbags in the 6GT with additional knee airbags. Its pre-safe collision preparation system and active brake assist Though, the BMW's 360 degree parking camera with its 3D view is quite a bit more advanced than the Merc's extra wide rear cameras and ultimately it better guides you through tough spots. In the part train department, you stand to win some and lose some in the Mercedes. You're up on par, but you're down on top, and you're up a gear technically because the Merc has a 9-speed gearbox. What immediately stands out between the two engines is that while the unit in the E-Class sounds a little clattery above 2500 RPM, BMW sounds a lot more silent, but the torque just builds so much earlier in the Merc that you barely find the need to be above 2,500 RPM in the first place. We've always felt this 9-speed gearbox, the 9G Tronic, to be quite excellent when it comes to guessing what gear you need to be in. And in the E350, it's no different. It's absolutely intuitive in the city and you'd never really find yourself reaching for the paddle shifters to take manual control. It just feels like it doesn't soothe the E-Class's character when you shift gears yourself. It's sort of like fetching a bottle of water for your butler. It's nice, but it's quite besides the point. So this part train can be uber, uber relaxed when you want it to. So in the city, it, you'll often find yourself sitting at about 1100 RPM while you're doing 50, 60. It's, it's quite something. Even on the highway, Given the, the nine speeds that this gearbox have, you'll find yourself at about 1200 RPM at 100 and 14, 1500 RPM at 120, and it feels entirely relaxed. Compared to the oil burner in the E-Class, this six-cylinder feels remarkably silent, but similarly refined in terms of vibrations. What you will immediately feel though is that the BMW's controls feel a lot more responsive, almost to a fault. So when it comes to actually navigating low-speed situations, you might find that it's a little bit jerky. Of course, if your chauffeur is the one who's going to be driving it, he will have to earn his keep with a very well-trained right foot. Compared to the Mercedes, the gearbox of the BMW doesn't feel as intelligent in this case, but it gets the job done and I think overall downshifts especially feel a little quicker. Where you'll actually find the BMW tripping up more often than not is at low speed city conditions where it seems to get caught out and you especially find it napping when you cross a speed breaker and you go to get back on the throttle, but you find that the engine is completely out of its power band. This engine does feel like it has a very, very strong mid-range though, and it feels like it extends a little bit further into the rev range than in the E-Class. That being said, the launch control that comes with this gearbox is vastly superior and allows for quite a bit of wheel spin and some rear wheel drive antics when you call for it though, I don't think that's really what owners in this segment are looking for. Given the base of comfort that this car is set up with, the E350 
in this AMG line can actually go a step further and give you not just a sport mode but a sport plus mode and that really brings things alive. Both those modes make the car feel just a little more tied down. It removes a little bit of the side-to-side -side body movements that you might feel over curves. And overall, it just makes the car feel like it's shrinking around you. We've said this before about Mercedes sedans. And in the case of the A-Class that we reviewed recently, it was plainly due to the extra light steering that car had. But in the E-Class, it's just that feeling of fluidity that it brings to the table. For all other times, Eco Pro is actually a surprisingly nice mode to drive around in, considering that it puts the powertrain into a coast mode when you lift off, and that actually makes the whole experience that much more serene. It is worth mentioning that the 6GT in Comfort actually has a steering that's lighter than the Mercedes in Comfort. They're both not exactly brimming with feel, but there's just something about the steering in the Mercedes that makes it a little easier to place. The 6GT also does feel like the larger car. It does feel like it's carrying its weight a little higher up, despite that stiffer ride quality. You do feel a little more of the weight transfer happen when you're in a corner. It's also worth noting that the 6GT in sport mode does feel a little too over eager for most situations and it's only until you're really going for it that you'll appreciate the extra responsiveness that the sport mode brings. We're guessing the outright performance advantage the BMW has may not mean much to most owners but it is something that comes across in the character of the two cars. Kickdown acceleration is also slightly better in the 6GT, though full throttle overtakes do come at the expense of getting thrown back into your seat. Similarly, outright braking in the 6GT is superior with a sharper feel at the pedal, though the Mercedes makes coming to a stop in city conditions more fluid and comfortable. Surprisingly, both these large sedans return remarkable efficiency figures showing that there really is no replacement for displacement, even when it comes to the ever-important fuel efficiency states. Along with this new steering wheel, it feels like you're getting a whole new steering system. It just feels slightly better judged in all the modes. You get enough weight as speeds rise, you get a feeling of your corner forces building as you're taking corners, and it just feels entirely confidence inspiring. So while comfort keeps the air suspension in a fairly languid and relaxed state to take care of a lot of the imperfections that our city roads can throw up, on some of these back roads, you might want to dial it into sport just to give you a little tighter body control without sacrificing really the compliancy or the bump absorption. It's quite magical actually. On fast sweeping corners on the highway, you'd actually be surprised at just how good the E-Class is at holding onto the road without introducing too much lean if you're in one of the sportier modes. Now the baseline setup in the 6 Series is definitely a lot firmer than the base setup in the E-Class. So much so that BMW has a Comfort and a Comfort Plus here instead of the Sport and Sport Plus in the E-Class. So even in the most comfortable mode, the 6GT feels about as firm as the E-Class does in its Sport mode. So what you're left with then is a large luxury sedan that's missing just a little bit of comfort in the middle. So that results in a car that can toss you around a little bit more whether you're in the front seat or sat in the rear, especially over poorer roads. Now the reason why that's relevant for someone who's going to be sitting in the back seat is that at high highway speeds, when the car's set in comfort, and you enter a long sweeping corner, the person sitting in the back just might feel a little bit more of those centrifugal forces acting on the car. So over a cemented section of road like this one that we're on right now, you do feel a, a lot more side-to-side -side motion as you can probably tell from this piece to camera. 
Overall, the ride quality on the 680 is quite typically German, so it doesn't really feel very compliant at lower speeds, but it does improve as speeds rise. And by the time you're doing about 100, 120 on the highway, it does do a very good job of evening out most bumps. For the more enthusiastic bunch, Sport Plus really does bring the car alive. You feel the entire car actually becoming tauter, so you get better body control, a slightly heavier steering, more instantaneous throttle responses and the surprising thing is, is that it actually changes the character enough that you feel like carrying a little more speed in this massive car. A lot of this has to do with the self-leveling air suspension in the Mercedes that limits lateral and vertical movements better than the BMW, ultimately helping the tyres cope with pondering loads and for you to find a comfortable turn of pace in the twisties in a two-ton luxury sedan. Not that most 680 owners are going to be pushing their cars too hard, but if they do, they would probably find that it tends to understeer when pushed hard because you feel all that weight getting pushed onto the outer front tyre and it doesn't feel like the sharpest tool in the shed. It's actually quite surprising given that the BMW rides on performance Pirelli P0 tyres measuring up to a massive 275 width at the rear. That said, at lower speeds the BMW does feel more sporty and less floaty than the Busetti. And if we hadn't driven both cars back to back in a manner most owners likely wouldn't, we would have sworn it was the better handler compared to the Mercedes. Objectively, the 6GT has a lot going for it and runs the E-Class equal in the points. The higher seating which makes it easier to get into and out of and standard rear seat entertainment package and air suspension even on lower variants, but they all could surely sway a few buyers too. But ultimately, the E-Class still does the big luxury sedan aim better and the facelift makes it the most distinctive Mercedes sedan you can buy, at least till the new S-Class gets here. And even then, you have to wonder if you really need to upgrade to the S if you have the E. It simply is that good. Mm.